Hey, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Zach, and I am a photographer here in town. And I have been pursuing photography for about 15 or 16 years now, from the point of saying, I have to do something with my life. What is it going to be to today? Um, so about 15, 16 years ago, I said, I'm going to be a photographer. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and this morning, I wanted to talk about um, honesty uh, and being authentic with who you are, uh, both with yourself, uh, second with within your own industry, um, and then with your clients as well. All right. Um, so I know that there's a nice mix of, of creatives here. We've got designers and photographers and web developers and art directors and, and all of that. And those are all industries. There's the design industry, and then you, you have your clients who need design, and your photographer, and of course, we've got our photography industry, um, and your clients who need photography. And I want to tell a few stories about when I got started um, and how I was communicating about what I did um, and, and the work I was doing. And, um, the kind of sea change that, that I had to make in my life before things really started to happen for me. So if I would have walked in here uh, somewhere around 2000, 2001, so somewhere around 10 or 11 years ago, and we we're sitting outside having a you know, cup of coffee and chatting, and you say, okay, Zach, what do you do? Well, uh, I'm a photographer, and... Um, I shoot uh, assignments for the New York Times and the Washington Post and Chicago Tribune. Awesome, right? You know? Uh, well, what do you shoot? Well, I shoot for their internet verticals and um, do like kind of online advertising. And remember, this is like early 2000s, so the internet was still kind of cool um, <laughs> and not the pain that it is now to some of our lives. But, um, wow, you're, you're shooting for the, you know, advertising on the internet, the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, the Washington Post. This is really fantastic. In honesty, what I was shooting were apartments for apartments.com. Now, apartments.com was owned by a company called Classified Ventures. Great company, fantastic company. Classified Ventures was this joint company owned by the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, Knight Ritter, Gannett, all right? Now, my personal goal of what I wanted to do as a photographer was not to shoot apartment complexes, all right? That's not what I went to school for. That was not, you know, I didn't get Richard Avedon's coffee table book of apartments, <laughs> right? I wanted to do real photography. I wanted to do important photography. I wanted, I wanted to, to make pictures that hung on walls that people walked into with a glass of wine in their hand. I was like, oh, wow. And it wasn't apartment buildings and exercise rooms and clubhouses. And there's nothing like taking a 360 degree virtual tour of a pool in Midland, Texas in January. I, I, that's, you know, here I am, this is my job. But if I, when I went out in the world, when I got on photography forums and I was speaking with other photographers, when um, I was still trying to get my freelance career going, I was trying to get out of apartments and get into editorial and commercial photography, what do you do? Ah, I shoot internet advertising for the New York Times and Washington Post and Chicago Tribune. You know, and every now and then it'd be, oh, do you know uh, Sally so-and-so over at, no, I, uh, we're in a different building. I see somebody, I gotta go. <laughs> All right? There's, in the, in the creative industry, there's this, there's this weird balance that we have as creatives of we have to go out into the world, we have to have a certain amount of uh, confidence in what we do. But what I see so much and what I was so guilty of and what I see so much of today is 
that we go out into the world and we make this very large projection of ourself. If you would have met me 10 years ago, I would have walked into this room trying to make myself 10 feet tall. I would have taken some little thing and, and, and expanded it into, well, that's a big thing I'm doing. You know, it's, it's uh, well, I just uh, finished up a, a web campaign for Nike. You're the eighth subcontractor and you did a banner ad that happened to have a swoosh on it for a Facebook thing, right? Is it a campaign for Nike? Yeah, Nike's kind of your client, but you're the eighth contractor down. So there's this part of us that we want to jockey. You know, there's the big saying of fake it till you make it, right? Just fake it till you make it, get out there and, and put your best foot forward, blah, 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 blah. But as I walked in and, and shook someone's hand and gave them this spiel, I knew I was lying to them. I knew I was taking this little grain of truth and expanding it. I might as well have just gone into politics. Um, <clears throat> I was lying, basically. And, and I was trying to convince people that I was doing things bigger and better than I actually was in hopes that they'd like me, in hopes they'd, they'd find an interest in my work, in hopes that they, heck, they'd hire me and, and pay me money so I could quit doing the toilets and the clubhouses. One of the biggest rules at apartments.com is when you photograph the model apartments, um, when you photographed the bathroom, the toilet lid had to be down. You know how many times I had to go back to an apartment complex and re-photograph a, a bathroom because I forgot to put the toilet lid down? You know? And here I am going, I, I want to be a Richard Avedon one day, and this is what I'm doing. So, uh, as much as I jockeyed, as much as I put a, a big projection of myself out there, as, as much as I did all of that, I never got my career started. If you would have talked to me, you would have thought, God, man, Zach's doing amazing stuff. No, I wasn't. But I was hoping you'd think I was. You know, was it ego? Was it, was it pride? Was it just trying to get the next job? It, it was all of that. And what happened was it all came crashing down. You know, I, I lost my career. Uh, I went through a divorce. Um, I ended up working at Kinko's. Eight and a half years ago, I was at Kinko's and Buckhead. If you had a project run and it was messed up, I apologize. <laughs> um, and it all came crashing down, and a dear, dear, dear friend of mine named Mark Climey. Um, Mark Climey was uh, shooting weddings here in Atlanta, and he gets in touch with me one day and he said, look, I'm shooting weddings, I'm really busy shooting weddings, I need another photographer, would you be interested in shooting weddings? And, you know, apartments to weddings, in my mind, was like, I, I don't know, man. I, I wanted to do real photography. And, and I thought wedding photography was whatever. But I'm at Kinko's. The only pictures I'm taking is a passport photo. You know? <laughs> and why not? You know what? All right. So, so Mark bought me a camera and set me loose at a wedding. And I, I felt as though I, I was, you know, the paddles had been hit to my chest and I was brought back to life. And I got started again in this industry eight years ago as a wedding photographer. Now, is that what I wanted to do with my life? No. It's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go and still do the editorial and the commercial thing, and that's, that's where I wanted to go. But so now I'm shooting weddings. And when you're talking to an art director, you know, you sit down, here's your book, and I, so what are you shooting? Weddings. <coughs> <laughs> <coughs> you know, not advertising, for, I'm just shooting weddings, right? But I looked back on my life and I said, you know, what I used to do and how I used to puff myself up and, and how I used to project myself out there as large, that did not go well for me. So if I'm shooting toilets today and someone says, Zach, what do you do? I'm a photographer, I shoot toilets. <laughs> Love it, hate it, I don't care. I am happy I get to be shooting toilets today. You know what? I'm at a wedding, I'm shooting a wedding, I'm happy. I'm taking pictures. I'm getting to do what I do. It's not the coolest thing. It's not the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. It's, it's not these big goals and mountaintop ideals that I have that I want to do with my life. But you know what? It's where I am today. 
So I started to just put myself out there as, you know, when I talk to anyone in my industry, when I talk to any potential client, when I talk to whoever I'm talking to about what I do, I'm just going to be honest with it. Here's what I'm doing right now. And here's who I am. I'm just a dude. You know, I used to be a dude, dressed up as a dude, playing another dude, you know? <laughs> and, and it didn't go well. So I'm just going to be honest. Here I am. This is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm working on, and here's where I'm trying to go, but I'm not there yet. So um, I get started. My career is starting to build up, and, and I'm able to go get a studio space, and, and things are starting to happen for me locally here in Atlanta, and I'm kind of feeling good. And I get this phone call one day, and I answer the phone, and this lady says, Hi, my name is Lynn. I'm a producer in Connecticut. I'm like, oh, hot damn. I have, my name's gotten out of Atlanta. It's got all the way up to Connecticut. Yes! And um, a guy named Mark Adams gave me your name. Sweet, Mark Adams is a good guy, great photographer, a friend of mine here in town. And we have a job coming up uh, next Tuesday in Atlanta. Yes? Tell me more. And Mark told us he'd be a great assistant for this job. Oh, Jesus. Really? Like, I thought Mark's pulling a joke on me. <laughs> that he got called to be an assistant and he said, oh, you know, I'm busy. Hold on. <laughs> Call Zach Arias. He'd be great for this. <laughs> and hangs up the phone. And so she starts to go into the details about this job. And I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, sorry. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to stop you, but the ego, <laughs> the positioning, the jockeying, the, hey, I don't assist anymore. I'm the guy pushing the button. You know, I'm not the coffee getter. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, you know, I hate to cut you off, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a full-time photographer. I have my own studio space here in Atlanta. Da, 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 da. Um, but you know what? Tell me what you're looking for and what you need, and I will find somebody to be there for you on Tuesday. She said, okay, well, Joe McNally's coming to town to do a shoot for Sports Illustrated. Uh, National Geo Joe? <laughs> like National Geographic Joe McNally. Yes. When is this job? Tuesday. I'll be there. <laughs> I, I am sorry that my ego just got in the way. Let me eat it, <laughs> swallow it, and I will be glad to go be Joe McNally's second assistant. That's fine. So I show up at Georgia Tech at like, you know, dawn's crack, um, and Joe McNally and his first assistant pull up in this Suburban that's just loaded with gear, and out comes all the gear, and I'm second assistant. And I'm happy, that's fine, I'm second, I'll be your third, you know, like, whatever you need, Joe. Um, his first assistant's a guy named Brad Moore, and a really great guy, awesome dude, uh, really liked Brad, and we kind of connected on this shoot, schlepping all of Joe's gear. And um, so we do the job and all of that, and life goes on, and. I was just happy I got to see Joe work, and I got to have lunch with him, and that was great. So Brad eventually goes on to work for this guy named Scott Kelby. And Scott Kelby is like, it should be called Adobe Kelby Shop. <laughs> All right? He is like the master of Photoshop. He writes a book about every 30 seconds about something <laughs> of Adobe. He's got this massive blog, and uh, he's just, he's huge in the photo industry. So Brad Moore, follow the little breadcrumbs here, you know. Brad Moore goes to work for Scott. And Brad gets in touch with me, and this is like two years, three years after that Joe McNally gig. And he goes, hey, we're looking for uh, guest bloggers, and I'd love for you to do a guest blog on, on Kelby's blog. And um, you can talk about anything you want to. You can talk about your workshop, you can talk about the DVD that you have out, you can give a plug to anything that you have, you can talk about lighting or composition, or you can talk about the lint in your pocket. But you have a Wednesday, and our platform is yours. Do whatever you want. And I was this little blip off on the edge of the photo industry radar. Just this little kind of small town guy in Atlanta, you know, when you think about the photo industry. I'm just this little guy off here on the edge. And now suddenly I can walk on this stage and 
I can plug my products, I can plug my workshop, I can show my portfolio, I, I, I can do all this stuff. Well, when Brad got in touch with me, it was a pretty weird time in my life. Um, my wife, Meg, and I had just gotten married. Um, I know, right? We got married and my life went weird. No. Um, but I was struggling as an artist. I was struggling as a photographer. I had gotten to a certain point and I hit this wall in my photography and, and what I created and the clients I had and, and I didn't know how to get around it and I was depressed and it was the winter. How many of you creatives like winter hits and you're just like, oh, you know, you're just like, this sucks. I hate the winter. Um, my dad, my dad's health was just declining. I was about to lose my dad. Um, and I felt like I was just stuck in the mud and my wheels were just turning and I didn't know what I was doing. And now, go and talk to everyone. But me, I was falling apart. I was absolutely falling apart. And it was a point for me to jockey myself, to go position myself, to start getting that that veneer put up, or to just be honest with people. So I started looking around the photo industry. You know, all right, what are people doing in the photo industry? How are photographers speaking to photographers right now? And it was all this like, hey, I'm an awesome photographer. How are you? My life is great. Hold on, let me get off this helicopter. Ah, oh. <laughs> you know? Anyways, I got three tips for you today. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Thanks, everyone. Ah, I got... Me and Madonna are getting drinks. And everyone who's struggling in the industry is looking at that guy, going, I'm trying to be that guy. But I'm this guy struggling. So I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the struggle. And I'm not even going to give you, like, here's a struggle and here's how to fix it. No, here's a struggle. That sucks. <laughs> how do I fix it? Keep going. <laughs> I don't know. So I made this little video. Uh, I'm going to show this video. It's about eight minutes long. Um, and when I put it on, when I sent it to Brad, said, here you go, here's my guest blog entry. Don't mention a thing about my workshops. Mention nothing about my DVD. Don't say anything about me. Just show the video. And, and I thought, I'm about to have a Jerry Maguire moment. <laughs> that I'm going to come out there, and everyone's going to go, He's lost his mind. Um, so let's pull this video up. Hey, I'm Zach Arias, and I'm the guest blogger today at scottkelby.com. And I'm going to talk to you today about Photoshop techniques and post-production. And I'm going to talk to you about off-camera lighting. I'm going to tell you how to start a workshop. I'm going to talk to you today about location scouting, picking out a background for a portrait. Thank you guys for the opportunity to be here. I'll talk to you about studio build-out. I want to talk about workflow and getting paid. I want to talk to you today about how to use a computer. I'm going to talk to you about light and shadows and the transcendental qualities of each one. Post-production and Photoshop techniques. I'm going to talk today about red chairs. I want to talk about uh, women's clothing. They're going to make you a successful photographer, Photoshop and post-production. I, I went to Ikea and I bought sticks at Ikea, $150 worth of sticks at Ikea. I want to tell you how I did it. Today we're talking about big huge prints and how to make them. Hi, I'm Zach Arias. I'm going 100 miles an hour down a dead end road. Who am I as a photographer? What is my voice? I don't even know what that really means, but it keeps me up at night. What is my vision? What is my goal? What do I bring to the table that countless others have not already served up on this massive platter of visual pollution we create each and every day? For the side of you 
Who am I? What is my goal? Every winter I get in a funk. A deep and abiding darkness seems to wash over my brain. I hate my photography. I'm convinced I'm a hack. I'm convinced that the work I create is trite and unacceptable. Every winter it is time to lash out and thrash about and recreate myself as an artist. Every winter I lock myself away in my studio and drag subject after subject through different lighting scenarios, wardrobe changes, sub-freezing locations. I borrow large format cameras. I rent different lenses. I create a thousand layers of garbage on top of a photograph. If I throw enough against the wall, something has to stick. Every winter I create a brand new body of crap. Stuff I'll never show the world. By January, I'm exhausted and depressed because I've yet to redefine myself as an artist. Jobs start coming back in. I'm busy again shooting what I know. By spring, I'm happy again because I pay all my bills with a camera. Summer comes along and I'm so busy I don't even know what my name is. I can barely keep up with the travel and the workload. Success settles in and I'm content with who I am. I lose my hunger. That fire in my gut is out, and I'm too busy to worry about it. But winter always comes. This winter was exceptionally dark. Why on God's great green earth do we have this insatiable desire to compare ourselves with others? What is this great sickness? I placed myself against my peers this year and was ready to walk away from the camera for good. I have so far to go, and I'm tired. It was time to reinvent myself again, but I didn't have it in me to even try. I settled into my depression and let it sweep over me like a gentle, suffocating blanket of cynicism and apathy. I've been driving as fast as I can for as long as I can remember. I've been stuck at this breakneck speed and it seems as though I can't get out of first gear. By the end of last year I was throwing rods and the gaskets were blowing out like birthday candles. It's bittersweet, this glass that we drink from, raise a toast as it all falls apart, got your stones at a throne, lay your As my friend Kevin Abeta says, we aren't curing cancer with a camera. That needs to sink in. The only job that cures cancer is the job that cures cancer, as my friend Luis says. The rest of us are just paying rent. At the end of the day, it isn't this camera that matters. My father, he gave me my first camera. He was quite the enthusiast. My father has now been lying in a hospital bed for nearly two months. They put the trach in to help him breathe. Now he can't talk. If he doesn't pull out of this, he won't speak again. He's had his 78 years to say what needs to be said. I pray his voice comes back. I have a lot I need to say to him, and I need to know he hears me. Chances are you have your voice. You can say whatever you want to say right now. So what are you saying? What are you doing with the time you have right now? When you're pushing 80 and you're flat on your back with no way to speak a single word, what will be going through your mind? Shutter speeds? Cool locations? That portrait series you shot that was printed in some magazine that no one remembers the name of? So why is all that so damn important now? I can pay my rent with a camera, or I can punch a time card and collect a check every two weeks. I can have the ability to make it to afternoon school functions for my boys, or I can just make the weekend events. I can hang out in a coffee shop with my wife at 10 a.m., or I can be watching the clock waiting for my 30-minute lunch break. I have an amazing life. 
I'm so very grateful for what I have, and any belly aching I do about it should have me taken to the woodshed for a lashing. So I'm still working on my photography. Am I so arrogant to think that I'll have it all figured out at 36 years old? I won't have it figured out at 56. But I'm on my way. And so are you. Some of you are the real top 10 photographers in the world, and the rest of us don't even know you're alive. You don't even realize how amazing you are. Some of you are just getting started. Be patient. Don't rush. Chill out. You are on your way. Some of you suck, and you really need some help. Your camera doesn't have a Richard Avedon button on it, does it? Well, Avedon sucked. Karsh sucked. Adam sucked. Mary Ellen sucked, Cowart sucked, Jarvis sucked. Every photographer in all of history was a horrible photographer for some period of time. They learned, they grew, they had dark days, they persevered. That is the way of the artist. Just be patient, keep on going. Transformation takes time, and from what I've seen in my life, it really is worth the wait. It's uh, still tough to see my dad there because I lost him. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I lost my dad a few weeks after this went out. Um, so so what's, what the hell's my point? Uh, my point is that I made that video um, and that, that song there for the most of it. Uh, it was my wife, Meg. Um, I, I'm, I just wanted to be honest with people. You know, I didn't want to just go and position myself and go, hey, I fart rainbows. Um, <laughs> and I, I thought maybe 10 people would get it. 10 people would, would see what I was doing. Really, I wanted, I wanted to make something for my wife. I wanted, I wanted to make something you know, that she would like. I mean, she likes my photography, she supports my photography, but I, I wanted to make that for her something that's cooler than what I normally do. Um, and the response to that video was insane. Um, it got on Kelby's blog, there's currently 500 something comments on that blog post. There's over 900 comments on my blog post about that video. It still gets tweeted 10 times a week, and it's been three years now. I was this little blip off on the edge, and instead of taking this platform and projecting myself as, hey, I wanted to just go, huh, hi, I'm Zach, I'm struggling, it's hard, it's tough, just keep going. Um, and the response was insane. Um, and I, I won't go into the numbers, but if we were social media experts, they're healthy, uh, all right? Um, so what I want to leave you with is, is a couple things. That if you're, you in the creative industry and you find yourself consti constantly living by the fake it till you make it, I gotta make myself a little bit bigger, I gotta stand on my tippy toes and hey, I'm, I'm doing this awesome thing, like tone it down, all right? You aren't curing cancer with your design, your photography, your art direction, your whatever. You know, you're doing good work and all of that, but, but you're not the epicenter of all that's going on in the creative world, right? Uh, so tone it down. For those of you who are struggling and you're like, oh, I'm never going to make it there, you know, just be honest. Be honest with who you are. Uh, be honest with your industry. And be honest with the clients. As I go around and shop my book around and I sit in front of big so-and-so art director, I'm nervous as can be.
because I haven't just shot that new campaign for Levi's or whatever. I'm just, I'm just a guy. I'm shooting pictures. I'm in Atlanta. Here's my stuff, and let's get along and have a cup of coffee, and maybe I get, you know, let's hang out. Um, so not having all the big things in my back pocket doesn't stop me from getting out there and trying to go still get those big things I want in my back pocket. All right. Um, and some of you, you may be, you know, you may be shooting at glamour shots right now. All right. How many of us are, you know, graphic designer? How many graphic designers in here? All right. How many of you like get those uh, value pack coupons in the mail? And you just kind of laugh like, what fool is having to do this for a day job? Ha, 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 You know? Well, that fool having to do that as a day job may be, may be brilliant. And they're just trying to feed their family, and they're just trying to figure it out. You know? And you may be like, I'm trying to be creative, and nothing is happening for me. My life right now is just there. That's, that's my wife right now. She hitched her wagon to mine, and I'm going 100 miles an hour. She's an amazing creative, a fantastic musician. We have four boys, age two and a half to 13. You think she can live on the road? Especially when I'm on the road? And, and she struggles. It's OK to struggle. Um, if you're in that spot, if you're in that, it's dark, it's struggling, it sucks, make something. Create something out of it. I cannot tell you how helpful making the video was for me. When it's dark and depressing and everything sucks and you hate everything about what you're doing, make something, create something, share it with people, be honest. And it's amazing how much things start to open up for you. So thank you very much for having me. Yeah. All right, so we'll do a Q&A. So if you guys have questions uh, for Zach, just feel free to shout. Uh, have my struggles been with depression been less hard since I put my video out there? I'd say no. Um, it, it didn't change my body chemistry at all. Um, if it did, Final Cut would be uh, bigger than it is. Um, no, but you know what it did? It, it, it connected me to, to tons of people going, I deal with that too. Like, I'm not alone in this. I compare myself to everyone else too. Like, I mentioned that I, at the very end, I was going through all these great photographers who sucked at some point, and I mentioned this guy Cowart, Jeremy Cowart. And Jeremy Cowart's the type of photographer, I look at his stuff, and I'm just like, I'm taking my cameras, I'm putting them away, and I'm going back to Kinko's. I will never be there. And I'd never met him, I'd never talked to the guy, but I went ahead and called him out that he had to have sucked at some point. And he calls me like three days later. He's like, I'm giving a talk, can I show your video? Oh, yeah, do you, uh, okay. Um, and then we ended up uh, meeting a few years later. And it turns out he was looking at my life and going, Zach, I've been watching what you've been doing the last couple of years, and, and I just I wish I had half of what you got going on. And I'm like, oh my god, dude, I look at you, and I wish I had an eighth of what you had going on. And he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and we're like, really? You know, so it, it did help me know that I'm not alone in this. Um, and and it, it gave me something to do. Like this winter, I was really not looking forward to this winter. I thought, this winter's going to suck. It's going to be exceptionally dark. So we started planning personal projects. I'm going to keep some personal projects on my plate. I'm going to, you know, regularly every week go out and shoot and make something um, and things like that. The hardest thing for me with that video was the, f that, like, the feeling like I got to follow it up I gotta, I gotta make transform part two, transform harder. Um, <laughs> and, and what I've learned was like, I, that came out of my gut. It just, I, it just, just let it out and just let it be its thing and not try to turn it into a franchise kind of thing. 
All right. Oh, how did I get to be so cute? Well, I'm just a mirror of you. Other <laughs> <laughs> uh, questions? Yes. Besides that video, what project have I worked on that has inspired me the most? Um, currently, I have this project going on called Faces and Spaces. Um, and uh, a lot of what I've done over the last eight years is shoot musicians. So I shoot people 30 and under. And um, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to go shoot different subjects. So I started a, a project um, where I'm only photographing people 70 or older. And um, it's been great to, to meet people and to sit and talk to folks who are our elders um, and hear their stories. So I photographed a World War II veteran and just to kind of hang out in his apartment and hear him tell some stories, like, that's awesome. I'm there to make some pictures and build a new portfolio piece and just do personal projects, but I'm getting to meet really interesting people and, and hear cool stories, and, um, and that, that project right now for me has been really inspiring, just for me as a person. Current goals. Current goals. My current goals um, is to survive next month. Um, yeah, I'm on the road for all but like six days next month. So if any of you are babysitters, please speak with my wife afterwards. Um, <laughs> I want to shoot the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. It's, it's a Mount Everest of music photography. Like, I got to go climb it some point in my life. Um, I, you know, I, I'm trying to grow in, in the industry of, you know, editorial and advertising photography, and um, I would like to shoot a Levi's campaign. Anyone? Anyone got a... <laughs> um, Anybody? Anybody working on Levi's campaign? Um, you know, so I, I, I want to go and, and create that kind of, uh, that work still. Um, but the, you know, I look at it as I'm almost 40. If I live to be 80, I have my entire life I've already lived to live once more again. And I'm starting knowing how to walk and use the bathroom. So I'm in pretty good position right now. <laughs> you know, what, it, it's interesting that, I feel personally about that video piece, it's the very first piece of real art I've ever created. It may be the only art piece that I've created, and the reason being is, is when I put it out there and people started to write and send comments and stuff, they said, man, I got this out of it. I never put that into it. Like, how'd you get that out of it? Like, people are getting different things out of it. It's meaning different, and you know, a musician watches it and says, wow, that says something to me as a musician. And, I was just talking to musicians, and um, so that's, a, yeah, it, and I, trust me, I had a backup plan, because I was scared to put that out there, um, and I had this whole, like, you know, off-camera lighting blog post, just in case I was too afraid to, <laughs> to send the send button, I had a backup, use a softbox, you know, like, and I bet you anything, I wouldn't be here this morning if I had done that. If I'd have just done something and talked about my workshop, I'd, I'd not be here today. Let's give it up for Zach.